Hey there, so we've been talking about um, forces and the laws of motion. And in order to help us better use the laws of motion to solve some problems, I have for us here today a little lab activity. Um, you might recall that we talked about in the last lesson the force of gravity. The force of gravity, it's the force that gravity puts on an object. And if you recall, the force of gravity is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. If you recall, the acceleration due to gravity there was 9.81 meters per second squared. Right? And so our little lab activity that we're going to do here today is going to be to find the acceleration from gravity. Now, if you, if you look at the structure of the equation, if I measure the force of gravity on some different masses and I make a graph of that, then the slope of the line of my graph should be g, should be the acceleration from gravity. So to that end, what I've got here is I've got a couple of, I've got three. This is called a spring scale. And on the spring scale, I can hang different weights on here. And you'll notice it's got a scale here that tells me the force in the, in the outside ring. It'll tell me the force in newtons, which is what I want. In the red ring in the middle, it'll tell me in pounds, which is not what I'm looking for because this is science and we use the metric system. So I'm going to use the black outside ring with the, with the numbers in newtons. Now I've got three different spring scales. They all look kind of the same. This one will measure as much as, what is it, two and a half newtons. But some of the things I want to measure might, weigh, might uh, have a mass of more than two and a half newtons. So I have one that goes up to four and a half newtons. And I also have one that goes up to 18 newtons. Okay. Now the weights that I'm going to hang off of here are these little slot masses, right? Each one of these is 100 grams, and it says on there 100 grams on each one. Um, now I'm not going to want the masses in grams. I'm going to want the masses in kilograms which is okay. I mean, it's not hard to translate between grams and kilograms. All you have to do is divide it by 1,000 because there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. Okay. Now, it's not going to be so easy for me to hang this off of this to get the weight. So what I have is uh, what's called a mass holder or, or a mass hanger. right? And this itself, if you, look, if you can see on the top, I don't know if you can see, it says that this itself weighs 50 grams. Can you see the 50 grams on there? Okay. So I'm going to hang this on my spring scale. And now there's 50 grams on there. And then I can add some slotted masses to increase the mass on there. And I can read off how much the, uh, the force of gravity is on there. Okay. So I've got my lab handout with the instructions. You've probably got a digital copy. We'll do this, and there's not that many questions after doing the lab, so that's nice. And then I've also put together my data table, which you'll find on the lab handout right there. Okay. So now we need to pick some masses to use. So what might be a good place to start is with just the 50 grams. Okay. So I'm going to put the 50 grams on the spring scale and see how much force that is. But first, let me see how much is 50 grams translated to kilograms, because I need to record kilograms. Okay, So I'm going to take my calculator and 50 grams divided by 1,000 is 0 0.05. Okay, And I can trust that to two significant figures. So 50 grams, it should, it should be pretty close to 50, two significant figures. So I'm going to put 0 0.050 as my mass. 0 0.050. Okay. Now let's put that on the spring scale and see how much force that is. How much is the force of gravity here? Okay. I'm reading a little bit more than 0.5 newtons. I'm going to angle the camera up so maybe you can see it. A little bit more maybe than 0 0.5 five newtons. So let's say, let's see, maybe 0 0.55 we'll go with. Okay. So I'm going to write down on my data sheet here 0 
five five newtons and there's my first data point okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some masses I'm gonna put a hundred grams on there so together the mass hanger and the mass will be 150 50 for the hanger and 100 for the mass so 150 grams is 0 0.150 kilograms and let's see how much that weighs so I'm going to put that on there and it looks like maybe just a little bit more than 1.5 newtons it looks like to me let's say 1.5 let's say 1.55 looks like a good a good reading 1.55 and there's our second data point okay now let's add another 100 grams so now all together I have 150 here plus another 100 and it's 250 grams which if you divide it by a thousand is 0 0.250 kilograms and let's see what we get here okay this is right about the limit of the scale okay just a little bit more than 2.5 newtons it looks like I'm gonna say let's say that's right on 2.5 newtons so for that one we'll put 2.50 newtons okay let's add another 100 grams so this was 250 plus another 100 is 350 which in kilograms is 0 0.350 And now I'm going to move up to my next bigger scale. This one is too small now. I'm going to move up to the one that can measure up to 4.5 newtons. So we'll hang this on here and see what it weighs. I got, let's see, just uh, right around, three, it's almost exactly 3.5 newtons. Right around 3.5, you can see up here is four and down here is three and this is like right about in between right on that line that's right between so let's call this 3.5 3.50 newtons okay let's do a couple more data points here so we'll add another 100 grams so this was 350 now it's 450 which is 0 0.450 kilograms And we'll hang this on the spring scale and see what we get. And that's right about the limit of this one. It's right around 4.5. Pretty darn close to 4.5 newtons. So I'm going to say 4.50 because it's like right on there. So 4.50 newtons. Okay, let's do at least one more here. Okay, so now I've reached the limit of this spring scale. I'm going to get the big one now. Here's the big spring scale. I had 450 grams. We'll add another 100 and make 550 grams, which is 0 0.550 kilograms. Okay. And let's see what we got. Looks like a little bit less than 6. It looks like 5. A little bit more than five and a half maybe five point we'll go with about five point six you see it's maybe just a little bit more than that five and a half there that longer line right there would be five and then there's six so that shorter line would be five and a half would be five point five and it's a little bit past that so we'll go with maybe five point six
and I'll put 5.60. So I have three significant figures. And let's see, I've filled up my data sheet that I've drawn. It really doesn't matter if we fill up every single box in the table, right? It's okay as long as we have you know, a good amount of data points. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a graph with this data. And we're going to find the slope of the graph. And hopefully, like we said, hopefully we see the slope of the line is somewhere pretty close to 9.81. Okay. Now, am I going to get exactly 9.81? Probably not. If I get somewhere close to 10, you know, 9.81 is about 10. If I get somewhere close to 10, then I've done pretty well. Okay. So let's make the graph, and we'll see uh, what our slope comes out to. OK, so now you can see that I've made a graph of force versus mass. I've put the mass into the x-axis column, and I've put the force into the y-axis column. So you can see the force there, and you can see the mass there. And like we said, we want to find the slope of this line. Hopefully, the slope of this line is pretty close to our 9.81 number. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to do a little curve fit on this graph. We want it to be linear, so let me apply that. And here we are, our, our slope there, you can see we got 10.03. And, you know, like I said a minute ago, if we got somewhere pretty close to 10, then we probably did pretty good, right? So we can probably trust this number to maybe two significant figures. Most of the numbers that I collected were three, but there were a couple of numbers that only had two. So we'll trust this number to two significant figures, and we'll say the slope of that line is 10, with a decimal point because we want that zero to be significant so 10 with a decimal point so did we get pretty close to 9.81 i think we got pretty close um maybe we could have got a little closer but given that our tools were very old i think we did pretty good so there you go Okay, and so then there's a couple of questions for us to answer about this lab here. The first one says, describe how the mass of an object affects the force of gravity on that object. So as I added more and more mass, what happened to the force, right? Well, when I had more mass, the force went up. So I can write my answer. I can say something along the lines of increasing the mass increased the force. And similarly, back the other way, if you decrease the mass, it'll also decrease the force, right? So I would say when you increase the mass, it increases the force. The other question says find the slope of the line, which we just did on the graph. We got 10 with a decimal point, so that there's two significant figures. And keep in mind the um, units of that are going to be uh, newtons per kilogram, which is, should be the same thing as uh, meters per second squared. It's, it's an acceleration. So I would say it's 10 with a decimal point meters per second squared. Okay, that is all of the questions on our lab handout. So we've done this lab here about finding the force of gravity with some weights and some scales. So pretty neat there. Uh, hopefully that gets us a little bit closer to being able to use the laws of motion to solve some problems. So until next time, take it easy.